Hello and welcome to Spinner Rack, the audio no, <laughs> the audio version of Spinner Rack. Uh, minus two of our um, two of our co-hosts. Uh, are yeah, don't mind, don't mind us. We always like you to know that people are missing. <laughs> you know, we also want to you know you know we're joking for a little bit, but we'd like to you know. Send our condolences to the Muhammad Ali's family. We lost Muhammad Ali yesterday, and everyone is, of course, um, you know, saddened by that. It's really, you know, not a tough thing to take. I would always say my my initial thoughts is that he's always, you know, he's always been so visible. There's so much of him that he gave to the world. Is someone that you can never forget. So, like in the Star, those the Star Trek series, they said, you know, as long as we remember. There's like pretty much no way to forget Ali as far as everything he's done, as far as, you know, as far as what he did, his stance against the draft, as heavyweight champion, so many years of him being celebrated, you know, after struggling with America, then being celebrated as our, um, you know, heavyweight champion, and then just being an international, you know, person that just spread, you know, peace and goodwill across, across the world, so... Can't disagree with anything you said there. I think I'll quote Barry Cordy, where he says, you know, some people come along once in a while, some people come along once in a generation, and some people come along once. And that applies to Michael Jackson, that applies to Prince, and it definitely applies to Muhammad Ali. So uh, what we wanted to do in commemoration is just to look at the, you know, that uh, class of work from the 70s where we had Superman versus Muhammad Ali, and you know, I think the 70s was a pretty good time for something like this. There was, you know, the whole crossovers and uh, you know, having real-life people in comics. It wasn't something that it hadn't been done, but I, they were exponential at that point with the Treasury editions, and we got to see Superman and Spider-Man for the first time. So the idea of two American icons who were really, really popular at the time, Superman and Muhammad Ali, meeting up in a comic book, and them actually trying to do something where they would it would actually be feasible was a pretty good idea. It's also one of the books where Neil Adams finally got to stretch his wings a bit when it came to drawing Superman. He was well known for his covers in the 1970s, but Superman versus Muhammad Ali is probably, I'm trying to think. Well, what was it? Um, I'll go with my initial, I'll go with my initial reaction to the story as a kid because um, I didn't know it, but um, when um, I go to my cousin's house, that's one of the few comics he's had, and I think his my aunt used to be a comic reader, so she had bought that. That was always in the house, and I always read it every time I visited. And it was as a kid was one of the most brutal comics I've ever I watched. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Superman at that time. You know, as a kid, you just like you know you start Superman, you go Batman, like then you go Marvel. So I'm like reading that, and I'm like saying. Oh no, you see Superman lose to so many people and then to see the what was going on in that book, the fight is just so vicious and so brutal. <laughs> it was just like, oh my god, it was like so many years before I went back to it. I think Neil Adams was saying that a lot of current fans in the nineties were sort of down on the book, whereas it was internationally it was still in print and still like, you know, celebrated. So then I was like and then I think also, who is it, John Byrne brought up is that Neil Adams always likes to do a lot of funky panel layouts. And like Superman versus Muhammad Ali is the only time he really just played it straightforward, showed everyone that as far as storytelling, he's the top guy. Like you can't beat him as far as doing like panel to panel, page to page storytelling, and then also even bringing back the... Was it, I think it was Kirby called it the wide widescreen. That was Simon and Kirby called it the widescreen vision of the double splash page, but having storytelling within it on the bottom and top, like that sort of thing. He just really showed that hey, I I, I experiment a lot, but you know I know this art form. So re reading it in the '90s again, and it's like it's a fun book. You know, it's a, a fun book. They really sort of you know showed Ali as a hero. As a kid, I felt the same way that he was a hero. Uh, you know, like, as far as the common man, he's the people's champ, he's out there helping people, just like the same way I look at Kiss comic, I'm like, hey, the Kiss characters look like superheroes too, it's like, <laughs> they're fighting for the common man and all that stuff, so, ultimately, as a kid, it was rough, because of the fight, 
And then as, um, you know, in the, my 20s, reading it again and saying, you know, it's just a fun book. It's like fun book, great art. And, you know, Superman, seeing Superman at a scale where you almost get um, the Superman movie in the comic book with Neil Adams' art. And you can't really beat that. So all around, it's just a fun book. That's my assessment. I've always liked, I'm a fan of big Superman stories. And this is a big Superman story, not just the movie. You know, big pages, big amount of, you know, oh, big amount in terms of a lot of pages as well. But just a really far out idea. Uh, I think it takes, Superman takes Muhammad Ali back to the Fortress of Solitude, and then he uses this device, what's it called again? It was the, uh, oh. oh. The Kryptonian Continuum Disruptor. <laughs> where it's able to slow down time so Muhammad Ali can teach Superman how to box, and that every minute is going to be the equivalent of an hour. And they spent about three months in there with Muhammad Ali teaching him how to box. So when you fight, you know, at least Superman will have had some training when he comes into it. But, you know, a lot of times when they do these sorts of things, they chump one person. And, of course, you know, the Muhammad Ali is the, you know, the underdog. You know, the underdog of Superman has his powers, and Superman is the underdog, and, you know, he doesn't. But they did a very good job in the book uh, of highlighting the best attributes of both characters. And I mean, I was still a kid at the time, but I remember hunting this book down because I really wanted it. Because Muhammad Ali also had a he had a cartoon on at the same time, so in my mind he was you know you know he could definitely do all this stuff in a comic book. He had a cartoon, right? He wasn't like a real guy. He was more like a superhero mm -hmm. to me. He was selling decon, so he was everywhere for me at this point. I mean, when he lost to Larry Holmes, I was shocked. I was like, I think he could you know lose on something he wanted to, but seeing him in the comic was. A lot of that same thing, you know, the poses, you know, really getting the, you know, just really getting his, uh, his stance, his uh, facial features, all of those things coming across. The, the, the dialogue, you know, I thought was, at one point I wasn't certain about the whole dialogue, only to find out that Ali was like, no, you know, this is uh, how it has to go. And then, uh, you know, he had a stipulation for the book, right? Which one? I know when, I know that Joe Cooper was originally the artist and then they said they, they wanted a different artist. What was the stipulation you were talking about? Oh, Muhammad Ali said uh, that he was going to do the book. He wanted in the comic that he found out that who Superman was, that he would find out that Superman was part 10. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, right there, that's just a Muhammad Ali thing. If I'm going to be in the book, not only am I going to book Superman, I need to know who he is too. And so, but they, you know, they did it. And, of course, this is this pocket universe where it happens. It didn't happen you know, in the DC universe proper. At least it was never followed up, so we can't say that it ever happened in the DC universe proper. But, again, that personality, you know, translating to, into the comic as well. It's uh, it's one of my favorites. I mean, I've had this in the original form, and then in 2010, they, you know, did a commemorative anniversary version of you know, it, so I went and got the, a smaller one that I'm holding right now for reference, and they released the hardcover of the, the, hardcover of the treasury size once more. But you know, it's one of my favorites from that edition, and I really, I'm sorry we don't do that stuff anymore with the, with the treasury size. Yeah. It really makes the art just jump out at you, and you really get to see almost the same exact size as the pages that are rendered. So, I'm just a, I was just a really big fan of it. But, you know, overall, I mean, I remember guys being really critical of the story, too. Like, oh, you know, this, that, and the other, and, you know, it wasn't as good as it could have been. And in my mind, I'm kind of like, what do you mean? What kind of story can you really expect to get with Superman and Muhammad Ali? You got to do some stuff that is going to be localized to Muhammad Ali and some stuff that's going to be definitely localized to Superman, you know. So I was just really, I just got a really big kick out of two, you know, two, you know, two characters in the same book that I was really, really into and still into to this day. Um, no, Ali is like from, just cut from a different cloth where... He, I mean, I don't know. Those guys at that point seem to be able to have integrity without any particular problem. Come what may, come with consequence. Today, I really can't imagine anyone doing the same stuff that he did or that any of those guys did at that time because the consequence, it's almost like the built-in consequences are greater. Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily have the intestinal fortitude or the character to withstand it. So, you know, we look back on him as this great icon and someone who's able to take a stand, but... It's, it, I guess you can become even more larger than life because you can't imagine any of these guys today taking that sort of stand. Or we, you know, there's always a way to find a way around it or 
some held their aim to split the middle ground or make the effect of compromise. And he was willing to stand up for what he believed in, and even better than that, and that's Superman. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's a, that's one of the things when you see, you know, you see the past history on, you know, his story. And, they, you know, they've replayed it in many different form, film, documentary, you know. And I think even now on the Internet, it's like now becoming a big fight. Well, I, I just go on Facebook and it's like you talk about, the you know, him fighting, going, being drafted. And then they're like someone saying, oh, to put it bluntly, like. White people didn't like Ali until he stopped talking. It was like, um, what about like as you say, the cartoon <laughs> commercials, different strokes? It's like he's out there and he was, you know, like when once he you know, once he beat um Foreman, you know, everyone loved him. And at the same time when he um, you know, fought Larry you know, he fought Larry Holmes, it was like people were like, There's no way Larry Holmes could win. And the only person who was on the other side because he you know, he watched Larry Holmes with my father, and he was like, there's no way Ali, Ali can win. He's too old, this, that, and the other. And they're like, what? This idiot is thinks that Muhammad Ali's going to lose to Larry Holmes? He's like, he took every bet possible in, <laughs> in the New York Times. So it's like, it's just to say that, you know, like a person, at that point, he, he was, I mean, no, he was always celebrated overseas and whatnot, but America did, you know, come around as they, you know, they should have. And Ali was proven right, you know, so, and he, you know, the people like to pick out that him and, who's it, him and um, Joe Frazier, the battle, but you have to remember, there was trash talking both ways, like, uh, uh, who's it, Frazier said, you know, Frazier said, called him Cassius, like, who knows how many years post <laughs> him changing his name, like, when they first go into fight one, the first fight, he's like, well, you know, you know, Cassius, in the interview, you see Muhammad Ali just rubbing his head, like, disgusted with the interviewer, and it's just like, I can't deal with this. This is just like, and you know, he, of course, is a trash talker. And you know, you don't want to change it around and say, oh, this and the history and how black people did. Like, he's, he's a trash talker. He did, that's what he did. And they'll, you know, get on Frazier's nerves. So, you know. Yeah. But Frazier's one of the few people who could actually do some trash talking back, and it actually mattered since he was able to win a fight. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, again, when I'm looking at the comic book, that, uh, I mean, the actual fight between him and Superman, I thought was done pretty well, where, you know, it's not, I mean, Superman has to lose, but it's, it's, you know, the ring has to go on to Muhammad Ali, it's kind of like if Superman's a Batman, he can't be the better protect. you know, that has to be Ali's thing. But still a really respectable fight where, you know, you know he's not knocked out by Ali, he more, you know, he falls, you know, after taking like, a pretty good beating. Which unfortunately they decided to adopt for too many Superman comics later on. Well, we're going to show how great this guy is by like, how well of a beating he can take. Mm -hmm. but, in, but in this book, it actually works. And then the fight between Ali and this, like this green eight foot alien. Hunya! <laughs> that weird name. Is it, is it pronounced Hunya? What is it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly that. Just like, you know, I'm looking at the, I remember looking at it, I'm looking at it again now and wondering, like, wow, you know. You know, he shouldn't have been able to win this fight, right? But then again, it's Muhammad Ali. It's a comic mm -hmm. book. You know, he, he's going to win. And, you know, he goes off. And even in the comic, they give him two full splash pages so he can do one of these rhymes that he loves to do. And, you know, he proceeds to put the book on the guy. And then Superman's running around disguised as Muhammad Ali. No, as Bundini Brown. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it's so close in the drawing, but it's actually, what was it, Bundini Brown. He has Bundini. It actually gets some fight in the. He, of all people, Superman's disguised as Bundini Brown. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It does look like he does look like it's Muhammad Ali. It doesn't look like there's any difference in the drawing. No, there's no difference. Hey, it was the 70s, right? Yeah. No, nobody was paying. Too, nobody's paying too close. Too close attention. Yeah. Oh, it was a. Uh, it was just. I mean, I read some of Denny O'Neill. Well, Denny O'Neill only really did one thing with Superman. He's known for the Sandman saga and you know the getting of the kryptonite and having Superman's power taking a third of it away. But to be honest, those stories just weren't even fun. This right over here is a lot of fun. You know, it's a lot of fun. Maybe he loosened up a little bit because Muhammad Ali was in the story. But well, they said that what's the name? Like it's uh I guess the idea is um Danny O'Neill's and then 
Neil Adams, you know, did all, you know, went for past wherever um, Danny started because he was just like, I can't do it. And he, well, that's what Neil Adams did. He jumped out of it. And then um, Neil Adams did not only, you know, adapted from that script, did the dialogue for it too. But I guess with Julie Schwartz, um, you know, right behind his shoulders. But I would, I, you know, side note, I would accept this dialogue more than Neil's current dialogue. <laughs> I would give anything to anything close to this type of dialogue from Neil Adams' uh, writing. So. Yeah, that's what got into got into those online arguments. Mm -hmm. He killed all these aliens in the Muhammad Ali story. Like, he didn't kill anyone. He guess he did. Like, no, he, he just he smashed all the ships, but the ships were just floating there. Like, there were bodies floating in the in space. I was like, the only body floating was Superman. Yeah. So, I had the chance to, I had the, you know, because of, you know, one of those great online arguments that you always go with, there's always some fanboy thinks that they read the book and they had to just wait something. But it gave me the chance to go and look it over again. And now I'm trying to hunt down some of my, you know, I'm trying to hunt down, I have a treasury copy locked away somewhere, mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to find it again. You know, but again, I usually end with that last, last page where the two of them are shaking hands. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just a really, I mean, great scene, great art. You know, again, two iconic Americans, and you know, just really liked it. You know, I wish I was revisiting it. I honestly wish I was revisiting it for different reasons. Yeah. You know, but you know, again, just a really fun story. I wish they did more stuff like this now. Could you imagine Superman meeting on me? Who would he meet today? Who would he, there's no. Oh, um, please don't don't turn it into a, a Michael Jordan on LeBron thing, because I. <laughs> <laughs> Open the vein it up. It doesn't work with yeah. like a basketball player or a baseball player. It, it works with Muhammad Ali because he's of, of a similar physical nature to, to Superman. Mm -hmm. So what's there? I can't think of another. You know, the MMA guys know, and there's nobody in boxing that could really think about. But because none of them really have that larger than life character that Muhammad Ali does, so I can't imagine him meeting. Yeah, I just can't imagine him meeting anybody with you know anybody in mm -hmm. the same in the same fashion. So. Like you know, like you say, these guys, it's you know, it's, it's really like a once in a lifetime thing when you can have something of this nature. And mm -hmm. I kind of shake my head when these guys are coming. Kind of like, oh, you know, the story wasn't that good. It's, it's Superman, Muhammad Ali. You know, yeah, that's the story. Yeah. That's, Just getting yeah. these two guys together for seventy three, seventy five pages. That's your story. Yeah, it's a that you know, it's the other side. I guess the side note with it, and I have to agree because when. There's a different sites I've gone to, and it's like, well, it's just a, it's a dumb story, and it's like, yeah, if you you if you're going to pick, you know, if you're gonna make a big deal of it and say you can't do the normal Marvel stuff and say, well, this works because of X Y Z, and this science works, but then when you have there's so many other comics that are completely ridiculous, also that we buy just because it's comics, and we buy into because it's like, oh, we set it up in some sort of way. It's just a simple short story, a simple story that's, you know, that played out and was fun and, and everything like that. But I guess the other note is that if you look at, at this period, besides the Superman and Spider-Man and then Superman and Muhammad Ali, that this was like, for this period, was big business for DC. So oh, yeah. then they're like, let's do Superman Wonder Woman, Superman Flag, uh, so Shazam. And then they're like, oh, the Marvel's like, how do we get in on this? So they did a Thor versus Hyperion <laughs> to, to try to match up with every person that DC had put Superman against. So it's like, you have to remember, you have to remember when you look at this book, it was a series of saying Superman versus whoever is selling for us. So we're going to do treasury editions of that. And I think they reprinted the Superman Flash treasury. Did they do that? Was that a, was that a treasury edition where they just reprinted it or something like that? Yeah, I have that one. It's okay. Superman Flash, and it has all the Superman Flash races up to that point. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a great book. Definitely go. There's there's a couple of new editions, and also I like that. I got the original somewhere packed away because in the '90s, and it's a, a joy to look at. So go out there and buy it. It's out there. You got a good, great rendition of Muhammad Ali. Maybe not so great a Bundini Brown, because he does look exactly <laughs> like Muhammad Ali. But you got a great you got Superman the movie in the comic also. You have Neil, what he could have done had he done at least a good 
year on Superman of just adding, like, you know, doing some big space fights and big powerful stuff because you can't really, you it's know. Superman, you, it's Superman Part 3, except it's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, glad you guys could turn out for us. And uh, Spinarek, you know, we're going to say good night. We're going to say good luck. And Muhammad Ali, rest in peace. Yes, rest in peace, Muhammad Ali. And thank you for everything. <laughs> we'll still, I'll be still watching all the stuff on YouTube. And like, go to YouTube. He's out there. There's millions of tapes of him interviewing, fun, you know, making jokes, playing with kids, playing with Michael Jackson. <laughs> He's you know, just, <laughs> just a fun-loving guy. Yeah, excellent, fun-loving guy, and somebody who, again, just excellent character. And we just don't have that many guys like that anymore. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Take you later. Later.